Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage. And I'm Dennis, the Buddy Meister. Oh, what was that, Buddy? Do it again, you useless fellow. Couldn't you be a little kinder? What? C couldn't you be a little kinder, you know, common courtesy? <laughs> Jimmy! Who are you? Buddy Jan, and I'm going to get you, Jimmy! Hey, Jimmy! I'm Buddo! Can't you be a little nicer, man? Come on, it's not that hard! Okay, everything for you, Buddo. Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage. And I'm Dennis, the Buddy Meister. We have reviewed almost 400 indie movies on the channel and today we want to talk about a film that has been recommended to us since forever. Anian is a 2005 Tamil language psychological action thriller that was written and directed by Shankar. It's also a comedy and a romance and all in all you can definitely call this one a big masala spectacle. It was our third Shankar film, after we have watched and reviewed Entiran and 2.0 quite some time ago. I thought about doing this movie on my own, since it wasn't a poll winner or a direct pick by one of our supporters, but when I watched it, I knew that the Buddy Meister just had to see this as well. And I hope that you at least enjoyed it half as much as I did, because I absolutely loved it. Well, yeah, I can say that I enjoyed it half as much as you did. What? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I guess I will never become a big Shankar fan. It's not like I didn't like Anian, I just didn't love it. It's an okay movie. Fair enough. Now, what is Anian about? It's hard to talk about the story without giving away too much. We start with Ambi, played by Vikram, a meek lawyer who, unable to bear the growing corruption in society and a rejection from his love interest Nandini, turns to a dubious website that activates an entity called Anian that promises to solve all problems. Another character that plays a role in this is the supermodel Remo, who is about to win over Nandini. Maybe we should just fully dive into this and say that Remo and Anyan are also played by Vikram, who seemingly had the time of his life shooting this movie. This film almost felt like the quintessential Indian blockbuster, and not just because of the crazy action scenes, the big song and dance sequences and all the silliness, but also because it's so much about all these different social issues. Almost like a best of what's wrong with the country, and a question of how can we convey a pretty broad message wrapped up in a larger than life masala movie. Everything in Anyan is so exaggerated and also so much fun. I love the whole beginning in which our goody two shows protagonist Ambi is having one of the worst days you can imagine, which simultaneously comes across as your typical day in India. It has a very funny satirical touch to it. Someone spits at him in traffic, the woman he loves gets molested in a bus, someone is dying in the middle of a street and no one cares, the hospital blames him for not bringing him faster and just everyone is really showing the worst side of humanity. I thought this was quite hilarious. Shankar is a filmmaker with a strong social agenda, someone you can feel is very frustrated about the status quo of his country and who mixes in all these elements into this big three hour long extravaganza. To me it felt like a mixture of Rajamuli and Upendra at times. The style, the creativity, the knowledge that anything can happen at any time. Of course this is very much a Shankar movie in that it's innovative in matters of technology and ideas and this full on political significance, bringing up topics like nationwide laziness, boozing, molesting, corruption, nepotism, police brutality, it's pretty on the nose and kind of bland in my mind, but it's supposed to be a movie for absolutely everybody, so... I thought it's just so much fun. One of the film's definite highlights for me was the whole train ride early on. How Ambi is constantly calling for the TTR or how his best friend Charlie is rearranging the whole sleeping situation. There's this wonderful shot in there where we see everyone at their place in the compartment. That scene sticks in my mind too. The cinematography was apparently done by two people. Initially V. Manikandan was at the helm, but he left the project halfway through and was replaced by Ravi Varman. Either way, the cinematography in Anian is great. 
Now, of course, you could criticize the film for going a very reactionary, maybe downright fascist road in creating this vigilante onion who just murders people who are doing harm to society. But I could honestly totally see past that with these because this is such an exaggerated and silly film. And Anyan is also more of an anti-hero. It's all a big fantasy and yes, true, it's a violent fantasy of taking justice into your own hands. And even if Ambi as a lawyer himself says that it's not right, the movie is very much showing sympathy with the whole idea. But it's an over-the-top fantasy nevertheless. Yeah, this whole vigilante thing gave me food for thought too. But honestly, you could point that criticism at pretty much every superhero movie or half of all action movies if you want to. So I don't know why it should be considered a problem here. The movie also plays and functions in its very own movie logic, as in don't expect anything to be that realistic or plausible. Especially not the film's main highlight or gimmick, which is the constant shifts of our protagonist, including his different physical appearances. It's really bizarre when the film at the very end still gives us that short shot of his home where we can see hairspray and a book about learning web design, as if that is making anything more realistic. So I guess the cat's out of the bag story and spoiler wise. And yes, that scene didn't make any sense whatsoever. But like you said, Anian has its own set of rules, if you can call them that. It's an extreme film in every way. It doesn't want to be subtle. And our protagonist is completely exaggerated in all three incarnations. It's really a lot of fun. Yes, it is. And I laughed out loud a couple of times, but somehow it didn't completely click with me. Anyan has a lot of style and also a fair amount of substance, but somehow this substance, as important and fitting it might be, couldn't take hold of me. The movie was just a constant flooding of visuals and crazy costumes and banter and sounds. That's all cool, but in the realm of these anything can happen movies, it didn't feel significant enough for me. And it's 181 minutes long. I was totally on board with the movie from the get-go, but there's a passage in the second half where it's really kicking things into the next gear. First we get that awesome Kanum Kanum song sequence and then Nandini witnesses firsthand what's wrong with Ambi. The scene where he's transforming again and again in that room is presented in such an epic manner. And over the course of the next 20 minutes or so we get so many epic moments. Him jumping from that building, following Nandini and then all the fighting at that dojo. You certainly recognize that just a few years prior Kill Bill and The Matrix Reloaded were released, but I think Anyan takes stuff from those movies and makes them its own by totally, again, exaggerating it. And I have to say that where later movies like Antiran and 2.0 used a lot of CGI, and this one does as well, there's also so much practical stuff, such great fighting choreography. I agree, the action scenes are pretty fun and well choreographed. I mean, when the martial arts master forms this human super fighter with three other men attached to him, that's really something. And like I said in the beginning, Vikram seems to have had the time of his life. Vikram is fantastic and the film so unapologetically silly, it's a pure delight. His Ambi is so wonderfully borderline annoying but also adorable with his fixation to do everything by the books. And his Anyan is so over the top evil and epic, with the hair and especially that voice. And Remo, well, <laughs> Remo is something else completely. <laughs> Remo kind of reminded me of the worst romantic Salman Khan roles that we've seen, only that this movie is having much more fun with this loony character and plays with that notion of the super male with the great hair and the sunglasses who gets any girl he wants. There are five song and dance sequences in the film and if one wants to be very strict, you could say that not one of them really develops the story or tells us anything new. So it wouldn't make much of a difference to the story or characters to cut all of them. But it would make a difference to the movie's big entertainment factor and I pretty much enjoyed all of them a lot. Yeah, I mean, I hated that Nokia song. It's probably the stupidest song and dance I've ever seen. Of course, this also has a satirical touch to it, but still. I loved Andankaka though. What a fantastic song and dance. Just wow. All song sequences have something fun or exciting to them. Be it the locations, the lyrics, the dances or just the ludicrous nature of the song Kanum Kanum, which was really next level. I really don't get you sometimes. What? I don't care. You hated it, but it was my favorite. It should also be noted that all songs are about our protagonist and his love interest Nandini, which I think is good because otherwise Sada's role would have been a little bit too much in the background. Not that it's not problematic or at least questionable as it is. The most memorable character besides the trio of Ambi, Anyan and Remo probably is the cop Prabhakar, played by the great Prakash Raj. He and his colleague Chari played a strange undercover game where the public shouldn't recognize them as cops, which is a lot of fun. 
Prakash Raj is super epic in this movie and the banter with Chauri is hilarious. A small gripe that I have though is that they try to make this a personal thing for Prabhaka by making his brother one of Anyan's victims. We don't know the brother and how it is casually presented to us in one sentence is lackluster, completely random and kind of stupid. Just like the homepage, anyan.com, it's just too stupid when the cops look at the homepage and one of them says, look, this looks like hell, and they immediately know that something's wrong. It was the year 2005 and not 1995 or something, come on. <laughs> you already mentioned the runtime of 181 minutes. Suffice to say that the movie is having some pacing issues, especially towards the very end I thought it wasn't so sure how to come to a satisfying conclusion. All throughout the movie there are passages where I thought, man, this is just taking too long. But to be honest, for a three hour movie, Anyan does a fairly good job at keeping the energy high. I've definitely seen worse and more boring. And I think the flashback that explains Ambi's nature is also just done right. It's short, but meaningful. I honestly was afraid of getting a big one hour long flashback. Yeah, so I think that's it. What would we say in German about Anyan? Anyan ist ein bombastisches, extremes und total überdrehtes Masala Spektakel, das komplett nach seinen eigenen Regeln spielt. Wer nicht mitspielt, hat verloren. I give Anyan 8 out of 10. It's more like 8.3, but I don't do that. For me, it's 6 out of 10. It's more like 6.4, but I don't do that either. Did you know that the abbreviation TTR originally derives from the abbreviation TTE, which means traveling ticket examiner. It became TTR because Tamilians, out of respect for the man, said TTE Avar, which means TTE G in Hindi. So TTE Avar became TTR. Nice. I was actually asking myself what TTR means. So what are your thoughts about Anyan? Leave a comment. You can hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd and also on Patreon, simply at the Jimmy Cage. And you can hit me up on Twitter at The Body Meister. And as always, if you enjoyed this episode, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like. And make sure you hit that bell for all we have to tell. <laughs>